Today's guest has travelled from New South Wales for the training camp and to be part of the Perth Corporate Rumble on April 22. She will be representing the notorious Red Team and she is the sister of the team's head coach, Mr Nigel Groves. We chat about the board game squatter, travel, outback trekking, childhood injuries, broken bones, Russian tunnel conspiracies, living in a shed, as well as skimming over her boxing preparation. Special thanks to the Hair Agency in Perth, who is major sponsor of today's guest, and Gobsback Mouthguards, major sponsor of the Perth Corporate Rumble. So please welcome Miss Casey Groves. As I said, either we've all dropped so much weight in the four weeks and haven't realised it because we're all just seeing each other or... And then you go back and look at the photos and go, wow. (laughs) It's got to be good, though, to be able to go back and compare yourself. And I know the weight isn't... I mean, it is, I suppose, for a lot of people. But you look at how everyone looks at the start compared to the end. Yeah. Samantha Lane, who fought in the last one, is the biggest change I've ever seen. Was it? Oh, unbelievable. I think, thank, I, hope, I hope I don't get this wrong, Samantha, I think it's about 15 kilos. Yep, wow. And she's short. Yep. And it was incredible. It was a completely different person. Yeah, so. 15 kilos was what I was hoping to lose. I think I'll get around 10 <laughs> if I'm lucky. How, uh, what, what weight, because uh, you and your opponent, Gemma, yep. uh, Jenna, sorry, Jenna, Jenna, yep. deliberately said her name yeah, wrong there it. as if I didn't care. That's right. <laughs> Who is this girl? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because you guys, so you'll almost, because you would have been about the same. So you got to drop the same amount together almost. Um, so she, I believe, was 85 um, at the weigh-in. I was 95. Okay. Technically, it was me that had to lose the whole heap of weight okay. too much down to her. You were a bit so. taller than her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a fair bit. Yeah. Is that just height? Because you don't look... I, you were 95. Yeah. Yep. Seriously? Yeah, I'm now down to 87. Oh, that's massive. Yeah. In what, <laughs> five, six weeks? Five weeks, I think it is. Yeah. What was your training like prior? Um, I was still training. Yeah. So um, I pretty much went to the gym every day, would do 20 minutes on the treadmill, then do leg weights, arm weights, mix up my days, um, and then do cardios on my off days. So. What what's different about about the training now? Um, it is more intense training. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I still do the cardio at the gym. I've added in more swimming. Um, I've obviously the training um, at Counterbalance. I now do their strength and stretch class. I do their hit class. I do their boxing class on top of then Everything. the boxing. Yep, on top of that, um, and then diet. Diet um, is the key, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, so um, I'm working with one of our family friends and doing the keto diet now. So I oh, okay. over to heard some great things about that. Yeah, yep. So is that the one? Is that the one where you have to have like a not excessive, but just with the water, with the water intake, you got to keep it right up. Um, not necessarily. No, I mean I'm assuming water intake is always <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> always a bonus. As I and have my the, fourth coffee for the day. Right, yeah. water I've, in there. I've had one so far. <laughs> so, but with the training, one. one coffee. Do you yeah. want a coffee? No, no, I'm okay. good. I will have the water though. Um, with the training though, you find you're drinking a lot more water anyway. I can so you're kind the of sweating. Yeah, yeah. So Do you take those hydration tablets as well? Um I take a sugar free electrolyte powder. Oh, okay. Yeah. So make you feel better? Um it does, yep. It often makes me feel more thirsty. <laughs> So it's, it's got kind of, salt in it, hasn't it? Does, it does, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of this torn thing. I'm in the middle of training. I'll be drinking the electrolyte and then throwing back water, water. at the same time because my mouth is getting so dry from training. And then at the same time, then I'm feeling really <laughs> bloated from all the water that oh. I'm drinking while still trying to train. So. And a shot in the stomach while you're bloated. No one that, wants to see that. That's it. So um, a keto is a, lot, a low carb, no sugar, basically. Sugar. That's that's criminal, that stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that the most addictive? Like, people have an addiction to sugar more than anything, more than alcohol, more than ciggies, more than... I've heard that. It yeah. can't be good for you. Yeah. That's why people get addicted to Coke and all Whoa. those things, all the sugary drinks. I used to work with a guy that used to drink four litres of Coke a day. Like, um, you know, he used to buy the... Uh, two litre Cokes, yep. and he used to drink two of them in a day. Yep, that was my other, not Nigel, but my other brother. He used to drink, go through so many bottles. That was incredible. But he 
and he does tend to have a sugar addiction. So Krispy Kreme donuts, I would bring them back in a box <laughs> and within an hour they'll be gone. <laughs> yeah. So it's your fault. So you're the so, enabler. Okay, yeah, nice. well, that's it. Chocolate, <laughs> same thing. You would just go through like bars of chocolate. Really? Yeah. Isn't and yet he's skinny. Tall, skinny. Oh, <laughs> he trains so. all the time. So. Don't they? Um, doesn't it give you kidney stones? Is that a thing? It could be. Sure. I, I heard yeah. that. Yeah. Jeez, I'm, I really should. I really should brush up on my my dietary <laughs> advice here. I got no idea. Firstly, I got to say we got to address this. Yep. How confident were you were you that you were going to be on Team Red? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I knew before going in. We'd always said that if I did it, yeah, that Nigel would be my coach. What What made you want to do this? Um, I've boxed before yeah. um, and I've trained with both Nigel and Glenn for probably like on and off for the past 10 years or more. Yeah. Um, and while I was in Canada, I trained there for three years doing boxing. I did kickboxing. Um, I just had never done anything competition-wise. Okay, so no, no amateur bouts or anything like no, that? No, no. Yeah, it was always just fun work out <laughs> fun fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> it must be daunting I, that's 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 the thing i know that i mean niger's been in the ring uh, a number of times i was watching one of his fights the other day it must be daunting to him for him that his little sister's getting in there i don't know that niger finds it daunting my other brother does he yeah. won't come watch the fight um, and he was the same when Nigel was fighting as well. He did come watch one of Nigel's fights, but he hated it. He hated seeing someone like Nigel being hit. And it's the same for me that he won't come watch me because he doesn't want to watch me be hit. Whereas Nigel, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he just seems to take it in his stride. So I struggle watching yeah. some of you guys get hit. That's yeah. how I get too invested. What's your relationship with Glenn like? Because for you two are obviously close. Yeah. But now Glenn has to train someone yep. to fight you. Yep. How has he, do you think he, obviously being the professional that he is, how is that going to affect your relationship with him and how do you think he's going to go tr- uh, training Jenna to I, fight you? I kind of didn't really give it much thought. Um, I oh, got a message. I'm bringing all this stuff up now. I know. Stress. <laughs> okay, stress. No. Oh, no, no, no stress. Um, I, I got a message from him last night saying that he offered to stand down as Jenna's coach, which I didn't really expect. I just, yeah, we're friends and everything. But at the end of the day, it's a competition and – regardless of friendship you you have a fairness to the person on your team to coach them to the best of your ability so mm. and that's what I expect him to do to you know he's the head coach this is his and Nigel's project so definitely didn't expect like any kind of special treatment or for him to step down or I just yeah expect him to train and and train Jenna to the best of his ability and same way Nigel's training me it's the you know that's, that's and they keep saying it throughout the whole training session you know each of them um have a job to do and they each know the same thing about each other so regardless they're going to be teaching us the same thing so it must be tough for him yeah i don't know it must <laughs> like, be tough. Well, yeah. and so he was he was looking about the possibility of, of stepping down and letting chris take over as the main coach is that yeah. correct yeah okay yeah, because Chris couldn't care. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> well, I don't know him like I know Glenn. Because you know. yeah. it, it's the first time that I'm aware of that anything like this has happened. Yeah. Well, apparently um, Nigel was saying that he had a friend's wife that they were training a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. Or a couple of, yeah. So, and he did step down as head coach for her. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be it'd be a tough gig. I mean, yeah. there's there's so many new factors that are coming into to this uh, to this PCR. Uh, everything from down to the age. I mean, there's there's a couple of uh, people in their fifties yeah. fighting this time round. Yep, that'd be good. Right. One of them's kicking it off, isn't it? Yep. Kerry's uh, up Kerry, against uh, yep. Carly. Yep, yeah, that's a huge age difference. Jeez. But Kerry's like an energizer bunny. <laughs> she she just go so go full goes. Of yep. <laughs> How much does she do in a day? It's amazing. Oh, incredible. Bummery. What's <laughs> in the water down in Bunna? <laughs> Oh, we know what's in the water. Yeah, the other. They've it. done tests on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how has this affected your uh, relationship or strengthened, I should say, with uh, with Big Brother Nige? Um, 
Good, I hope. Mm. <laughs> I kind of, I, I always go into training with Nigel and think this is our bonding moment. Yeah. Nigel's such a busy person. Um, and now that I don't live in Perth anymore, the... Um, just don't get the time really to spend and even telephone calls we can go six months without talking maybe a text message here and there so um i always count this as our bonding time (laughs) but it's kind of hard because i'm still sharing him with 14 other people so (laughs) you you think you get you know you go okay we've done training i'll have a quick chat with you now that i got it and then all these other people swarm in i'm like okay i'll catch you later (laughs) (laughs) where are you living now Um, i think it's beerwood but new south wales oh really yeah okay because you've got the uh airbnb in tassie that's right yeah we'll get on to that a bit later yep so how is it with I, I know that being Nigel's sister in this in this situation does he I know that he's from what I've seen he's very professional with all his training yeah. it must be hard for it to not appear like he's giving you any special treatment if anything you're going to be getting I get the harder you treatment. get the worst <laughs> you are going to have the worst jobs yep. and he's going to I get picked on <laughs> <laughs> the very first, uh, very first day, because I stuffed up the time of what we were having the orientation. I didn't realize they changed it to later on Me in the neither. afternoon. I messaged him. <laughs> I messaged him, and I said, "Are we still on for six thirty? And he goes, oh, "So sorry, Brad. We had it like at one o'clock today." I'm like, "Good, Glenn Austin's back in town here." See, and you didn't get called out. I did, so I rocked up at. I, I think it was apology. like nine thirty. I think. Did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> an apology. I got called out. So 9.30, I'm, I'm there and I'm like, where is everyone? Yeah. Did I get the place wrong? And I'm trying to go through messages. I'm calling Nigel. I'm calling Glenn. Neither one of them are answering their phone. And it took me probably about a good 15, 20 minutes of scrolling in my messages to find where the message was that said they've changed it to 1.30. <laughs> <laughs> and Classic. of course, yep, I got the call out for that. <laughs> it must be. So you're staying in Spearwood at the moment? Yes. Who's yep. staying with? Oh, so it's our family house. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. That's nice and close to the gym. It is really close to the gym, which is better than going to Anarchy. Anarchy. Which, yeah. Anarchy. And yep. uh, it, it is, I know it's south of the river. Yeah. And a lot of people say, you know, it's it's especially people from north of the river saying, you know, it's it's, it's a fair trek. And when I came down, I thought it was a fair trek as well. Yeah. <laughs> but all the people south of the river have been doing this for years. They got to battle the freeway to get up to Anarchy. That's exactly it. And especially when it's a nighttime one, you're coming back at that six thirty traffic. Oh, <laughs> freeway traffic. Yeah. That's a nightmare. Oh, it is. I definitely haven't missed that. <laughs> I've got a photo. I was having a look here. I got a photo of you guys. This is you. Oh, yep. And you're, so, how old are you guys here? Uh, I would say I was probably about seven or eight. Yep. That's Nigel there. Yep. That's Nigel. So, mm-hmm. and my other brother, Andrew. Yeah. Um, so, that would make Andrew 10 and Nigel 12 or thereabouts. The reason this, uh, this got me here is what board game are you playing? Squatter. <laughs> The name of that the name of that game is what I found funny. Yep. Do you still have Squatter? Um, Mum did buy it. Uh, I think about two Christmases ago when we were all meant to be going over for Christmas. Yeah. So my mum does this big, massive Christmas now. Well, not massive because we've kind of dwindled down people wise, but she organises a whole heap of activities for Christmas. Yeah. So she'll make a big, massive. Christmas lunch, um, and then throughout it we'll have activities that we we do. So I think you get out squatter. Um, well, squatter was what she brought because we're all meant to be going over for Christmas, okay. and then I think with COVID and lockdowns, um, we couldn't get get there, so we didn't. Oh, okay. end, we haven't all been there yet to play it. Oh, okay, so what you had so, the Christmas here, did you? Because you couldn't get over there. Um, I was in New South Wales, yeah. um, and Andrew and Nigel are here. The reason I ask this is because I was looking through these photos and I'm not one for playing favourites with uh, with the PCR team, but I do have my favourite here today. Yeah. <laughs> just by sheer chance. You know one of those things that just happened that you just can't believe it happened? Yeah. I got a gift for you today. <gasps> <laughs> You've got squatter. I found squatter. Oh, my God. So that's a gift from me to you. Thank 
you. Just in case you do. I know. So do you know what we're going to have to play? <laughs> I'm going to have to do a recreation of this photo with Nigel and Andrew <laughs> playing squatter. I thought just in case you can't get back over there and you ever want to play squatter here in Perth, you have your own version of squatter. That was this nine, is awesome. Nine, I'm glad you liked it. 1960 this yeah. came out. Yeah. Is it like a Monopoly kind of... You've got to collect sheep, so it's like a farming. <laughs> it's a farming Shit. game, and Can't as you can probably see off. on the thing, which I think is when I posted it to Nigel, I think I've got one sheep on my side. Look at all the sheep that Andrew and Nigel have, and I've got one. <laughs> so apparently, I wasn't very oh, good there. at it. <laughs> Squatter. Yep. Oh, what? It's just the name That's of it. It's funny. Yep. I don't. To be honest, I haven't opened it. So, yep. Is there yep. a knife somewhere over there? Under Groker chicken. This one. Oh, there we go. Oh, someone just—you you just come into a room and I close the door and there's a knife, knife on the just desk, just laying around. <laughs> and not only that, it's a. Uh, it's what's the word? <laughs> I can't there the um, the razor. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's a, it is too. I thought it was one of those like camping knives. Okay, how how I came about squatter? Yeah, was I was going through your stuff here. I walk past a second-hand store, just going to BCF, and out of the corner of my eye, it said squatter. And I went, huh, squatter. And then I went, wait a minute. Hang on. Why do I know that name? And then I went through my phone. I saw it. I went in there, and I said to the lady, how much for the squatter in the window? And she goes, that's a dollar. What? Said, you Done. picked it up for a dollar. I don't know what's in it. It could be any, it could be drugs in it. I don't know. Let's have a look. <laughs> it could be drugs in it. It's you not even knock that drink over. I can see it. Is that Here it? Here we go. Yep, that's the board game. The actual board. Has it got sheep in there? Oh, they don't do the sheeps anymore. Uh, They're just little counters. Oh, God. They used to be. And if you have a look, I think if you can zoom in, they used to actually be little like sheep heads stuck to the... The little white disc. Yeah, that's why it was a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it probably has changed. I have to get mum to check hers. Is but look at that. There? It's got all the... No, is that all? What is that? Just Oh, we are never g- We are never going to get this back in the box, <laughs> are we? <laughs> so, questions. So, it must improve pasture. Oops, I'll have to get... Ask my- questions or something and then you buy the sheep. With a tucker bag. And I swear, like, you get, like, things damage you or be careful, management, you have eradicated foot rot. <laughs> Retain this card. It will save you from all future treatment costs. That, <laughs> so, that is the Firefighting most. equipment, $150. Player has the option to purchase or bank sells to another player for the highest bid. Purchase a purchaser retains card until benefits gain then return it to the top of the stack so you have all these little things that can get rid of your sheep and that is the ultimate <laughs> country game yeah well i'm sorry it doesn't have the sheep in there oh that's all right Maybe. obviously as i said they've obviously changed it from my son's got a 3d printer maybe we can print <laughs> heaps print and heaps sheep. Of sheep. yeah he does he prints them he prints them Pretty funny things. Doesn't things we shouldn't print. He's printing little va- um, little pots at the moment, little garden pots. Anyway. Wow, that is awesome. Thank you. No worries. Now I am. Yep. This is – or I'll get Nigel and Kim to play. <laughs> or Kim's Squatter. kids. We, maybe the next generation need to learn it. <laughs> that is the most Australian <laughs> outback game I have ever seen in my life. Isn't it? I couldn't believe it. <laughs> One of our childhood memories. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because, like I said, I'd, I'd never seen it before. And I don't know why it caught my eye. That's it. Ju- it was the name. Yeah. No, it's squatter. And I just, you know, juvenile. I just had a laugh yep. thinking that's a pretty funny name. Yeah. And then I was thinking, why does that sound familiar? And I, you know, when you walk around, I was like, that something's up here. Something, someone has said this. Someone made a joke. Yeah. And I went, I'm picturing some kids playing this game. <laughs> Oh, it's Casey. What a coincidence <laughs> is that, that, though? Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Done. It's the first and last gift I've ever given oh, this PCR I feel crow. very, very privileged <laughs> and very privileged for it to be a squad. I this, yep. <laughs> How are the favourites I'm playing here today? It's unbelievable. <laughs> <I know. laughs> right. Shh, don't tell anyone. They already think I get favouritism from Nigel. Uh. Oh, you're... you're <laughs> 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 your, your brother <laughs> Nigel's expression <laughs> uh, that you can tell that's him straight away yep 
Look at the look at the nineteen eighties <laughs> Converse he's got on there. A stylish group we are. <laughs> Uh, you know what the funny thing is? See that car behind you, that Corolla? Yeah. I bet you that's still going. It could be. That'll too. still be going around there somewhere. I remember mum saying Corolla, Toyota Corollas, you could never never kill them. They never never kill them. It was one of my first cars as well, Toyota Corolla. I think I pulled out many a tree stump around the house with this kind of <laughs> – what about the acid wash jeans <laughs> on the brother? <laughs> we're just bagging your family here today, aren't we? It's just about no. you and we're just well, paying well, out. Look, yep, look at me with the hairband tie. <laughs> What's wrong with headbands? <laughs> I gotta get this haircut. My God, I gotta get this haircut. Um, that is something else. Yep. Look at Nige. He's so, so happy to be there, yep. isn't he? That's it. That's it. So that's where I'm. I'm not living there anymore. But that's in Batemans Bay, where I now I'm back to living. So that was at my nan's place. So you've come across here just for this event. Yeah. That's a massive commitment. Yeah. Two months of uh, being away. You seem to have a pretty good relationship with the uh, with your brothers here. I was having a look. You've done the the Frenchman's Cap hiking tour. Yeah. Is that correct? That's correct. Tell me about this. I saw a video and I saw some photos. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at this trekking. Here you go. Three Here you Here we go. Yep. This Our is family bonding, sibling bonding trek. Sound like you guys got to do a lot of bonding. It's almost <laughs> like that's it. That's it. Your parents go, that's it, you three. You're going on a bonding trip. You stop your fighting. I think it's more so the fact that we all have such separate lives yep. and we're all kind of doing, as I said, Nigel's always busy with everything that he does between the training, PCR and work yeah. um, and his own friendships and obviously relationships. And um, Andrew kind of does his own thing as well. He's truck driving at the moment and working 100-hour weeks. And, oh, jeez. Yeah. So um, – and then I – we all kind of travel, right? So yeah. I travel interstate a lot and I change my place that I live pretty much – Every few months. What do you do for work? Um, depend when, what time you're asking. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I tend to work the family businesses. Okay. Um, Andrew used to do home demolitions. I did see that. You used to work for used to work for him. Yep. You were a demolition labourer for Clean Slate Demo and Asbestos Removal. That's right. Yep. That is not a. That, sorry, that is a, f- a physically demanding job. Hugely, yep. It's not, and, and good on you for doing it. And the, I know women are, uh, are more than capable of doing any physical job that a male can do. I'm not saying that. But you would have to be the odd one out, not the odd one out, but <laughs> the rarest of rare yep. working, doing demo and asbestos removal. Yep. I don't think you don't get many females doing that (laughs) or many sibling teams, a brother and sister. Strange question. Did you ever spend any time in the UK? No. Really? No. So when I went to um, Canada, originally I wanted to go to America. America Mm. was to live and work in America was the dream. But trying to get a green card, Card, impossible. So pretty much all my friends at the time were all going to the UK. So I didn't want to go where everyone else was going. Somewhere different. None of them had been in Can- to Canada. So I went, well, that's where I'll – and I could easily get a visa for Canada. So yeah. I went – Banff? Yeah. Okay. So I lived in Kenmore, um, which is 15 minutes outside of Banff. Oh, that's a, that's the go. Just that yep. little bit away from the Australians. Yep. Yeah. So I started off for the first, I think it was about two years, I worked on a ranch in a place called Exshaw. I worked on a ranch? Yeah. Doing what? Um, so it was a ranch resort. So I worked in the office area, but um, so obviously they had accommodation. They did um, horse riding tours. They had like a ropes course, obstacle course at the back. There was um, white river rafting on the Kananaskis Kenan- River going down. So we sold the tickets for that. Okay. Um, did a lot of weddings and group bookings and all that kind of thing. So. <laughs> That's amazing. From I've have a look at some of your travels there. You seem to have just travelled almost since you've left school. Uh, I was t- probably twenty six. Okay. So I was twenty one the first time I went to Canada. So mm. I got that for instead of doing a big twenty first party, I got my flight to Canada for my twenty first. Okay. Um, and then yeah, I loved it, and so yeah. H- have fine. you gone with the whole COVID lockdown with with your travel? Was it? I. Feel- I feel like I was probably at the end 
of traveling. So the bug's so, gone, has it? Yeah, the travel yep, bug I think, is gone. Yeah, it's just time to settle down. Yeah, oh, <laughs> try to stay in one place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> try being the operative word to yeah. stay in one place. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I kind of, yeah, there's still places I don't want to see. And I always like going back to Canada because I've got friends over there. Oh, okay. So being able to go back and catch up. And I'm kind of a little bit now getting a little bit twingy to just want to go back and visit. Okay. But, um, yeah, that's, I guess, the cost of everything. And it's, it's not cheap, is it? Nope. And yeah. Having that freedom, though, that's that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That is so good. I have been really lucky. <laughs> yeah. And even being able to commit to say three months to, to move across here saying, Oh, I'm gonna yeah. do a boxing match, I'm gonna move to Perth for, you know, three months, do the training, do the match and then and then head back. Yeah. That is that is incredible that you've got that flexibility and that freedom to do it. Yeah. Very hard. Most <laughs> most people don't understand it and it's even harder when you've got to just explain it on a form or yeah. say what job you do or, or have to answer to <laughs> any boxer. kind of government or Pro boxer. Yep. That's it. Just travel. <laughs> Driver's license seems to be a major thing. <laughs> I had to go to the post office to pick up a parcel. Yeah. And um I had I've actually left my driver's license in New South Wales. I've left it in my car. Okay. So um, they wanted... Not that Corolla that we're looking no, at before. Not that one. No. <laughs> it's been updated since then. 800,000 Ks on it. Yeah. That's it. Still going. Um, and they wanted... So, so I was going through my email or trying to get into my emails because I knew I had a picture of my driver's oh, license yeah, on it. And the guy's like, it was taking my time. Oh, do you have anything with your address on it? No, not with this address. <laughs> Everything New like, South Wales. Yeah. Well, it's actually Tasmania, which makes oh. it even. And here I'm going, oh, I've left my driver's license in, in New South Wales. No, it's a Tasmanian address. It's, and Is I'm Casey in Casey your real name? Are you on the <laughs> run from someone? Because that's what it sounds like. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You've got all these IDs with all these different names. <laughs> yeah. You've got red hair and one, blonde hair and the yeah. other. <laughs> and as you can see from the pictures, I do change my hair colour quite a lot. Oh, you do. <laughs> I'm yeah. still trying to find this one of you in the uh, the big the big search. Is this? Are you in the profile picture ones? Or oh, I think I'm seeing all your photos here. Oh, okay. How long are we talking? <laughs> the old trampoline, <laughs> Haggard. I just saw that photo of you on the trampoline. Yep. How good are the new trampolines compared to the old ones? Kids will never know. The ones where they're like dug into the ground already, yeah. <laughs> and they don't even the... have springs. Don't and they? They've got they've got like walls on them and everything. <gasps> Kids will never know. Kids nowadays will never know the fear of, <laughs> of, of the brother double bouncing you, and you go off on a forty-five. You go, I'm going to land half on the springs, half on that, and your skin gets pinched in it. <laughs> and, or what we used to do, and I'm sure quite a few people used to get the laundry detergent or, or dishwashing liquid, slather it up with a whole heap of water. Did you ever do that? <laughs> that is just dangerous. <laughs> that'll that'll just yeah, you go, you slip and slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's trampoline extreme right there. <laughs> we do the sprinkler underneath. I do remember that, but the detergent. Detergent, geez. yep. <laughs> That's it goes on the gross out. And if you ever like broke an arm or something, there's no way you would cry and go inside because the parents would just go nuts on you, wouldn't they? Do you know what the funny thing is though? I've never broken my bone until a couple of years ago. I got hit by the excavator, excavator bucket. Andrew's big excavator bucket to the face sent me into a pile of bricks. Really? Broke my wrist. Yep. <laughs> oh, I like how you're just casual. Oh, just I, was just, I was just at a building site and got hit in the face by an excavator. How, how did work safe? Or did that one just slide through? That, that just lit up. <laughs> That's the thing of working with your family. You never never admit bit. to that. But it is funny when you go to the hospital and go, so what happened? I uh, got knocked in the face with an excavator bucket. <laughs> Are you sure and, that's what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween in Canada. Come on. You can't, I, I, you you guys, can't not celebrate Halloween. If you, I thought you were going to say cosplay. Let's have a look. Have, okay. On. I thought that you okay. were, oh, look at you there. Ah, that was, so that was Sassy. PCR, two PCRs ago. Really? Yep. That was the first one that I've attended. After a few hours of work and dust covered. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the big excavator. How's the body holding up? Uh, I don't know that I could get back on the roof again and yeah. do 
do all that work again. Probably if we did a, a quick knock down and knock the whole house down <laughs> with the um, excavator, maybe. The one that, the one but you got hit in the face with? The one I got hit in the face <laughs> with, yeah, the 22 tonner, <laughs> that one behind me. Um, it's really hard. So we used to do a whole strip out first. So we would go into the house, take out every any little bit of timber got knocked out, all the door frames, doors got knocked off. The flooring ripped up. To salvage um, it all. Kitchen. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, and then it was even worse if Andrew wanted to salvage something. <laughs> like salvage the whole kitchen. Because <laughs> like, then you're having to actually pull out the kitchen and save it and pack it up nicely. And oh. yeah. Um, then you would go up and do the roof. So, and tiles. And I was hopeless when I first started doing demo. I hate heights. Okay. And so I used to have to. He used to have to make him leave it a, like a tile trail that I could then walk back down to get to the ladder to get off. Eventually, I got to the point that I could do what I call spider monkey. I literally um, crawled down the rafters. <laughs> to and he kept to sending me on the road. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got better and better at it. But as I said, now I now I can like spider monkey it. But he, like, he's like a cat on a roof. He's got the perfect balance. He then knocks off all the roof beams. He mm. throws them down, and I've got to load them up into the truck. And some of those beams are flipping heavy. Yeah. <laughs> some people have just got so, that balance, haven't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he worked with. He started off with Nigel. So Nigel, I don't know if you know, was a roof carpenter. I didn't know that. No, so he had his own roof carpeting business and Andrew started off working with Nigel. So both of them on the roof, so just yeah, oh, I can incredible. Imagine. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so the funny thing is I'm looking through some of your photos now. <clears throat> Every <laughs> My cousin's gonna love that. <laughs> it's more it's more I look back at how dangerous some of our old play equipment was. <laughs> Do you remember getting the swing up on this so big that the feet used to come off the yep. ground? Yes. Have you ever yep. seen one go over though? I haven't never no. seen one. No, no, we tried. Me and my yep. brother used to try to get those things going. Yep. <laughs> and the feet used to come. Yep. <laughs> or you used to try and get the swing over. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know if anyone's ever been able to do it, but you used to try to get high enough to get the to get the whole way the over. chain. Remember the old chain, so they would swing over. You'd have to give that last one would have to be so much more power because otherwise you'd go up. Yep, and come straight <laughs> <Go> down. down. <laughs> yep. and, and the parents back there, what's wrong? Because I'm the same as with my kids. I, I'm I'm worried they're going to get hurt. But back in the day, what we used to do, yeah, and I was like, oh, that's fine, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Nowadays, I we, don't know. We used to take off on bikes. I remember one Christmas we got all got bikes for Christmas, yep. and I have a feeling we must have been looking for Cavisham Wildlife Park. That's the only thing that I could think. <laughs> we lived in Beachbar at the time, and we went on this. huge... Huge, That's massive. That's not close to Cavisham Wildlife no, Park. No, oh, it was a huge, massive yeah. ride. And I think I would have been around the same age, so about seven, eight-ish. Yeah. And, yeah, with the boys trying to find this park all through, like, the bush. <laughs> it was a full day. I don't think we ever found it. <laughs> so, and you just take off. The parents don't know off. where you were. That's it, yeah. They're both our parents were working and, <laughs> and wouldn't have even given it a second thought. So, yeah, it's not what like you can do today. No. You definitely wouldn't let your kids go off. Why, why is that? It's, I, it's, it's I think like, we're more aware of the dangers or I don't know. Because back then, uh, the cars didn't have to have seatbelts either. That's I remember right. we yeah. had a car and we had a strap to hold onto in the back. <laughs> How dangerous is that? <laughs> kids riding in the front tar- seat. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't. And the bench seats. Yeah, bench seats. Stopped about there. Yep. No neck support. If yep. you got rear-ended, that's it. Whiplash. Yep. <sighs> Those, Those nice. were the days. I know. <laughs> that, I do understand the safety need now. Yep. But it's gone a bit far. Yeah. But the trampolines are what get me and nowadays. Is, uh, no springs. It's amazing how they get that to work. Yeah. How'd, I, I don't know. I don't know. Kids are still getting hurt on them. Oh, here we go. This is your injury. Ah, yes, my broken wrist. Is that is <laughs> yep. that from? So, um, this is my what it would have to be day two because one, I in, injured myself, and then he made me sit and wait for him to finish. <laughs> What Before he work? took you to the hospital. Oh, no, we didn't even go to the hospital. <laughs> we went home and said, well, let's just see how it goes. If it hurts overnight, then we know it's broken and then I'll take you to the hospital. Bag of frozen peas on it or something. So, yeah, basically the whole night I was in so much pain and I think it got to like five o'clock the next morning and I'm like, yep, you're going to have to take me to hospital now. This hurts like anything. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we, we, we went the whole day. So I went the rest of the work day, which I think was about 40 minutes sitting in the truck after we did it. Yeah. And then, yeah, the whole night and went to the hospital the next day. So I have a feeling this was just after going to the hospital and that's me going to work. <laughs> so okay. we've, we've wrapped it up so it didn't get wet. This was before the cast was put on. So they kind of do like a temporary cast thing. Yeah, plastic first. kind of thing. Yeah. 3D print one. Yeah, 3D print <laughs> he, one. He probably would have <laughs> caught Harry. <laughs> print a 3D hair. Yeah, You've got to keep working. I just need it. It's got to keep working. <laughs> I don't need it to get wet. Um, yep. And I was pretty much still climbing up the truck, having to jump into the back of the truck, sort with <laughs> yeah, my broken arm, broken wrist. I'm not going to question your brother's duty of care as an employer here, <laughs> but it seems... Uh, a bit lax at times. <laughs> so he yeah. he made you finish the job, uh, took you the next day, yep. and then it appears very fresh cast, and yep. he's given you a plastic bag and say back to work. So um, that's not even a plastic bag. That's tape, sticky tape wrapped around, so, you know, like packing tape. Let me guess, the that's the same stuff you used to strap the um the black tarp down yeah. for yeah. the asbestos? <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> the one that's about that thick. Yeah. <laughs> it's just horrible. So yep, <laughs> that's the stuff. Oh, the sympathy <laughs> from the brother. <laughs> Get back to work. Yeah, she's former employee, yep. only two stars <laughs> on that Google review. Oh, you would hate to like. He has such high standards because he has such high standards for himself. Yeah. He expects everyone else to be able to measure up to what he can do. But that's good so, though in the asbestos injury in the injury uh, in, industry. Because of some of the clowns that are out there just That's smashing that stuff up. Yep. The hilarious thing is when I first started, he wouldn't let me go near the asbestos. So, no, you, you don't want to get it, don't want to even risk getting asbestosis or anything like yep. that. So, I wasn't allowed to touch it. Um, he needed a hand one day removing the eaves on a garage okay. um, and his worker wasn't available to help him and he had to get the job done. So I, I was working with my mum at the time in the tax office. <laughs> so I literally came home from work, got out of my <laughs> office clothes into work clothes and went and helped him remove it. Then after that, Fine. Yep, all gloves were off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's it. She's been <laughs> exposed to yep, it. That's get in it. There. Yep. And it would be you, where you say about broken, yeah. like asbestos all over you. Some of those eaves. Are oh, so the hard. Stuff the, that's under them. Well, yeah, especially the on the roof. Yeah. Yep. Because I, you, you're thinking like 20 years of dirt and debris Leaves. and everything up there. So you've got all the water running. He's up there knocking it down as I'm trying to hold and support it without it breaking. And yeah, nine times out of ten, it does break. Snaps. And, just yep. The breaks right on your head yeah. for one. <laughs> so this is best as breaking on your eve. It's breaking on your head into a million pieces, and then all the dirt Dirt and debris comes raining down on you. So uh, he thinks he's got the hard job. I believe <laughs> I had the harder job. He sounds like he doesn't treat you that well. <laughs> <laughs> he loves me. Really. Oh, sounds it. Sounds it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but sad. I do like it because... He doesn't treat me like a girl. Oh, like that's he, what you he, want. That's it. He he expects you to be able to, and for me, it raises me up, right? So he expects me to be able to work and get the work done. So, and I like that. I like that. It it challenges me. He doesn't put any limitations or very few limitations on what I do. So that's that's probably a good thing. And I'm not giving your brother a hard time. Yeah. But that is that is good that he doesn't treat you like I suppose historically women were treated yeah when I work with some females as well and and some of those are the most incredible workers and and no one well I know some people do but a lot of them don't don't treat them any different they're more than yeah. capable if anything yep. they're they're better at the job because they think about the job <laughs> and don't go in yeah, and I think that is the beneficial for him is that I'm his second brain. When he's rushing to think, then I can take that logical step back. There are like definitely things I can't do, mm. like the weight of and especially the back of his truck trying to slam that thing shut. There's just no way I can handle it. Mm. Like with the walking across the roof, no way I can do that. Like there's definitely things that I can't do, but he does challenge me to do the things that, you know, that he knows that I can or could do. Make so. you a better person. Yeah. 
I yep. suppose that's not never been more obvious than now with with the boxing. Yeah, yeah, that as well. <laughs> so I'm getting nervous. The more I talk to you, the more nerv- I get nervous. Uh, I think it's everyone that comes in here. I do, and it's it's hard when when two people that come in here uh, fight each other. Yeah. Then, like, I, I'm very much a fence hitter in any fight, but but I I do find it that bit harder when it's two people I know. Anyway, anyway. Should we actually get into this piece here? Yeah. We've been going... Go. <laughs> Maybe we will make it a four-hour chat. <laughs> One hour five. Well, there we go. <laughs> Can you see? Yeah. We haven't even... <laughs> we haven't even touched anything yet. Nothing on topic. Yeah. All right. Let's get into this okay. PCR. Peace out. Sponsor. Here we go. Uh, the Hair Agency. The Hair Agency. T-H-A as I like to call them. Yep. The Hair Agency. The Hair Agency. Who are the Hair Agency? Charlotte McKinney. Charlotte Good old Charlotte. Yeah, good old Charlotte. Uh, where, where amazing are they hairdresser. So they are now located in Coogee. Yep. Um, Down near you. Entrance Road, I think it is. Now. Entrance Road, Entrance Coogee. Entrance Road in Coogee. Yeah, right next to Coco Boho. Um, they used to actually be in our house. So um, in we met. In your house. In our house. Yeah, so in Spearwood. Um, <laughs> oh, before that was across the road. So. Um, she rented um, behind a friend of ours and rented out a space okay. in this lady's property. That makes property. more sense yep. to me. <laughs> it sounds funny. Because you're doing it's, your house. I know. Oh, no. Uh-huh. I'll get to that. So, my mum, who is a tax accountant, she comes back to Perth for the tax season. Yeah. Um, she rented the front of that space. So, we all kind of became friends and a big kind of community. Yeah. little bit of a falling out. And Charlotte ended up, we had our house rented. So, we actually live in the shed of our house. That's my where you live gonna, now. Yeah, my mum's going to hate me calling it that. <laughs> she, the shed. She, yeah, it's actually the apartment or the unit. or It's been converted. So, <laughs> it's all been like inside. It's all got the jet rock up and it's, it's been transformed. <laughs> For tax purposes, a, it's a shed. <laughs> 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 oh. yep. yep. So because we're not all here, like it, it was pointless having the house. Yep. So we, yeah. And Big house only, down in Spearwood? Uh, it's only like a, what is it, two bedroom okay. house. Yeah. Yep. So, but a big shed. <laughs> Obviously, it's a shed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and a caravan. Um, so, yeah, we originally had the house rented out and that person moved out and right at the same time Charlotte needed somewhere and once again it was once when COVID was happening and okay. she needed a place to be able to do hair and so yeah she came in and rented out the house and converted it into a business. She lived there as well? No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's purely the house is rented out purely as a business. For tax purposes. <laughs> For tax purposes. <laughs> My mum's going to be going, no. Yeah, ATO just called me. I don't know who this girl is. She says her name's Casey. She's got all these different IDs. Yeah. <laughs> different personalities, different states. So many um, hair colours. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's how we kind of all met. So, um, Charlotte, I was helping her out. She took me on while... While I've been here, so I've been doing a bit of work for her, doing her reception, okay. which is what's allowed me to... To come over and yep. still put some money in my pocket. So, okay. Yep. And, and these guys were happy to jump on board and, and yep. sponsor you? Yep. Beautiful. It's good. It's good when like a family friend does that kind of stuff. That's it. Tell me the reasons behind you applying for this. Oh, Did Nige talk you into so it or did he talk no, you out of it? No. He, uh, I think we've kind of jokingly mentioned it in the past. Um, I – like it's – something that I kind of had wanted to do as I said I've I've trained in the boxing I did it in Canada and kind of wanted to walk the walk talk the walk 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 the the talk talk. walk the walk talk Talk the the talk and walk the the walk yeah that's what it is that one yeah (laughs) so um when I was in Canada and I was during the sparring, then I would only really spar with the guys. Okay. Um, I didn't like sparring with females. It felt wrong. <laughs> it just felt wrong hitting another female. Yeah. Whereas being able to spar with a guy, I knew I could hit them and they could do a lot more damage to me and I felt more confident in that than... Than hitting the girls. Yeah, yep. So... I did notice that about Jenna when I first went down there. She was the first to put her hand up in there to, to spar with the guys. And I yep. thought, she's good on you. Yeah. It's just fearless. Yeah, yeah. 
And it is. It's, uh, as I said, they can, and I do, I love training with the guys because it teaches you a lot more, I feel. Mm. Um, I was actually thinking about this as I was driving in. So when I started boxing in Canada, I, the person who I boxed with, he was a coach in the gym. So he did the, the boxing classes at the gym that I'd signed up for. Mm. So I started off with my three friends. I brought them along because oh, yeah, nice. it's always horrible you know, starting something new on your own. And um, slowly they kind of dwindled off and I kept going with the classes and I'd met people by that stage in the class. I felt confident doing it. Then he moved out of the gym and created his own boxing gym. Well, that was a lot different (laughs) then. It used to take me a good 10, 15 minutes to psych myself up to walk into that gym. I was the only girl that was there. They were all guys. And... For some reason, I always feel like guys can start boxing and they just have this natural talent for it. Like, don't have Not to be all good. guys. Not all guys. Not all guys. Not all guys, but a lot yeah. of them. But they, they seem to pick it up really quickly. And they, even if they don't know what they're doing, for some reason to me, it still looks like oh, they it's do. An ego, it's an ego thing, yep. probably. But for me going in... I felt like I looked like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I just no clue what I was doing. And, yeah, so it used to, yeah, to get the confidence to actually go in, I would actually have to psych myself mm-hmm. and talk myself into walking into the gym. Did that make you feel welcome when you got there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. And it became, that was my family. That was my social time. That was, the people were amazing. Yeah. Um, but it was just my confidence. And I'm not a huge people person. I'm very introverted. So actually getting to know people is hard for me to begin with anyway. So. Well, I'm glad you came in here today. Yeah, yeah, well, this is a, yeah, yeah, this is Now a, we've got squatter. Got, down now down that there. we've got squatter, <laughs> we're besties. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've um, doing the PCR. Um, it's kind of something that I had wanted to do. Um, but then I guess the timing of it, I was kind of – in a bit of a stalemate position and needed to get away for a bit, needed a change. And yeah, I figured that this was my opportunity to kind of break up that monotony and yeah, get out. And This is really, this must really give you something to focus on because this is an all consuming event. It is. Yeah. And if you have one day off, well, not one day off, but if you, you feel bad for it. (laughs) A lot of people have said to me that what they learn every day, they they leave that gym with another skill, with another talent. Yeah. Um, you must be uh, not not having the, I suppose, the commitment outside, being able to focus on this completely. Yep. That's got to be a good thing. Yeah. Probably a little bit to my drip detriment because I do push myself probably more and everyone's saying you know you need to take that rest day and I'm like but I can't take a rest day oh yeah <laughs> I've got, gotta keep going yeah I gotta keep going so every now and then your body forces you to take that rest day yeah. <laughs> and yeah I don't like it <laughs> any injuries you got um no all pretty good at the moment just a bit of a bit of soreness just a, yeah yeah your general workout soreness that you get okay yeah is this this you mentioned you've been to one PCR before which one was yep. that uh so I think it was I want to say it was November or June. I was trying to figure it out. Oh, yeah, we go. There Look we at go. you. Yeah. Glamorous. Yep. November 5. Okay. No, there you go. There so you November. went to the last one? Uh, no, there was one after that. Oh, yeah, it's the last sorry. One. No, no. I, no, no. I posted. <laughs> Makes it the last one, guys. <laughs> no, no. I posted that on November 5th in memory of. The one before oh, that. So it okay. must have been June that so I went, went to. And then, yeah. September. That was my support of <laughs> Nigel's. The September <laughs> one. Yeah. Yep. I think that was PCR September. 8. Yeah. That was a great event. That was amazing. They're the ones that had nine months to train due to COVID calling off the April event. Yeah. That's it. That was that's excellent it. fighting. Yeah. I was so fit. No one gassed. That was that's my favourite part. It's gonna sound bad. Yeah. My favourite part is is round three with everyone. Everyone still making it and <laughs> still being a good fight. <laughs> that was I think that the last one was great as well. Yep. Uh, it was a very short turnaround between uh, eight and nine, obviously. There was it was, yeah. About yep. eight weeks. Yeah. But I do I do remember that one very well. That was a great event at the Crown. Yeah. So uh 
obviously you've been exposed to the crown and and exposed to a, a sellout crowd there, which yeah. I'm guessing this one's this one's got to be close to being sold out, isn't it? I, yeah, I keep expecting it to. To say sold out, I haven't seen a sold out one yet. Well, if Glenn <laughs> Austin's holding the tickets. You watch. There'll yep. be like two hundred people there on the day. Going, I've got ticket. There's no room for them. Yep, <laughs> it's Glenn's <laughs> organisation. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, that wasn't a consideration <laughs> until afterwards, and then I went, "Holy crap! What have I done?" <laughs> so you didn't. So, so you didn't go to this one in September, thinking that there's a possibility that you're going to be doing this event. No, no. Because I know some people have been to an event in, with them in the back of their mind saying, I may do this one day yep. and actually been able to take it all in. Yeah. So you weren't doing that. You no. were just there yep. for the, just there for the to, fine yeah, dining It's the first the time that I got to – yeah, first time that I got to go and, yeah, was just enjoying the experience. Which table did you sit on? Uh, as in – Do you know who was – Who was on my table? Yeah. Kim, <laughs> so Nigel's partner oh, okay. and all her friends oh, okay. um, with my mum. Okay. <laughs> yep. That was. I'm just trying to think of the the result for that one because that was 13 fights. No, 14 fights. I think that went seven and seven, didn't it? Red and blue. Oh, uh, I no. I thought Glenn won that one. Jeez, I think God. it was only by one fight, if I remember correctly. There's 13 fights, and it yep. went seven to. That's right. It went yeah. seven to six. Yeah, seven to six. That's it. Yeah, those two are so competitive. I know they pretend they're not. But they are. So <laughs> it was funner when they used to have the really good bets. Like right at the beginning where they would bet, you know, like having to mow the lawns in a dress. <laughs> they don't do that right. anymore? Uh, not so much. I think uh, there was mention of shaving off the beards and then <sighs> apparently both decided it wasn't worth it. I thought that was more a Nigel's oh, detriment yeah. than Glenn. Nigel's like without a beard. I was like, beard. Glenn, what are you talking about? He's beard shaving. Yes, yeah. double. That's it. It's Nigel that would have to. But I would love to see that. I haven't seen Nigel without a beard in so long. That would be and funny. I remember my father used to all the time, he would grow his beard and then shave it off and he would have this baby face. So I'm kind of wanting to see what see Nigel, baby face yeah, Nigel. See if Nigel has the same baby face once he shaves. What about just a big Big mo, just a big handlebar no, it's mo. It's got to be the whole lot, really? the whole lot. Yeah, to have that that baby face look. <laughs> As I said, it's just an image of my head that I always remember from my father whenever he used to shave. And yeah, I reckon Nigel would be the same. <laughs> it would be such a shock to see him without a beard and a mustache. But yeah, I've never seen him w- without one either. Yeah, jeez, I was thinking. Imagine if it was like like the Ultimate Fighter, where the two coaches fight at the end. Yeah. Could you imagine that? Oh, no, no. Spring it on them after they've had a few drinks. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> Just get, get in the ring, yeah. put your clothes on. <laughs> at about the last fights at like 11 o'clock <laughs> and at about one thirty, yeah. say, all right, to close out the night, Nigel and Glenn have got to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, do, and do three rounds. <laughs> oh. I would like to see them do three rounds because they often train against each other. Whenever Glenn's had a fight, Nigel will yeah. train with with Glenn and I think vice versa whenever Nigel's had his fights. Yeah. So, um. But to actually do the the whole round oh. and do three of <laughs> Could you imagine those two in round three? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Especially at the moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't say that. Jeez. <laughs> Sis, it's teeing off. <laughs> Are you staying at the Crown for the night? No, I'm not. I'm coming home. Heading home to Spearwood? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It is nice at the Crown. Do the coaches obviously stay there, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They of course. definitely do. Because yep. they have that big. Are um, oh, you going to the the breakfast? Yeah, I'll go to the yeah the party after. <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous. That thing is it? <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen photos, and I heard from someone who was there after that one that you went to, and they said, "Yeah, it's it's pretty wild." A couple of people had me to bed. I think someone wore the belt in the pool as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do they sink straight to the bottom? <laughs> is the belt that heavy? <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Those it's, belts. I haven't felt it yet. Have you seen my belt? Oh uh, yeah, I like inflatable. <laughs> yep. I was going to say somehow I feel like that's a lot lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Hopefully, I will be uh, taking that belt home. I'm sorry, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, they are impressive because they're actual like full size, full weight belts. Yeah, I had one in here last. I had to give it back. I had one in here last year, but yeah, I'd do it just for the belt. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, no, I don't but. know how I'm going to get it home. <laughs> Might have to come back with mum and Trev in the car. Just with Jenna. Just I'll, just, I'll Jenna. just wear it on the plane. <laughs> she said, Jenna, can you hold this for me? It's, it's yeah. belt I want. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> How's your relationship with Jenna? Because obviously oh. you guys were fine beforehand. She's such a lovely person. She's, yeah, she and appears the, nice. The funny thing is that going into this and when first starting, I kind of didn't actually want to get to know any of the girls because Just knowing girls. that, yep, if I have to fight them, that that's going to be so hard to do. And But Jenna is just so lovely. <laughs> It's you- so friendly. <laughs> like you can't, I'm like, damn it, I don't want to like you. I've got to punch you. <laughs> she, she seems to be a very nice lady and a nurse. Yep. What do your parents think about you taking part in this uh, this bloodbath on April 22? <laughs> <laughs> so for Jenna. For Jenna. <laughs> Trevi hasn't actually said that much, so I'm assuming he's okay with it. Yeah. Um, my mum split minds. Obviously, she's been my biggest supporter yeah. and um, in even in doing it and, you know, keeping my vo- motivation up and, um, you know, being over here and everything, um, she's she pushes me. <laughs> so, she, she wants me to do it. Not so uh, good about the watching of the fight. Okay. So, <laughs> so she, you said she's not going to be there? No, no, she will be she there. She will be there, yep, okay. But she'll probably be the one under the table when I go out there. So, if you see. <laughs> the table to there. my fight. That would be my mum. Call security. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, she definitely wants me to do it. Um, she, you know, encourages it and everything. Um, but yeah, the actual watching or, or the being hit, and she was the same with Nigel's fights as well. Like she was cringing and hiding behind her hands and all worried. And yeah. So I think it's probably a little harder watching her baby girl <laughs> go through that. But, yeah. Uh, I suppose uh, with with Nige, the experience he's had, he's obviously going to be in your ear to be walking you through every possible scenario. Is he helping yeah. out with with your parents as well? Just letting them, like reassuring them, knowing that you you're going to be safe. Oh, uh, I'm assuming so. Um, I know that he's had some conversations with mum. Mm. <laughs> so, um, Is he making the situation I, worse or better? Uh, I don't know. Well, he <laughs> says I'm looking good and he's he's confident, so yeah. um, probably making it better for her, I think. Uh, Having uh, doing something in the combat field, though, it's just it's a different level, and it's different to anything anyone could possibly do, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yep. I think I I find it must be just very hard for family members to see it because I see how invested we get in our friends, and it's just at a different level when it's your family. It is. Yep. So you got to respect the family and friends for coming along to support you when. Yep. And tough to watch it. Yeah, and they yep. get pretty rowdy. I see some people getting getting very rowdy behind their behind yeah. the family members. Yeah. So, have you got any fears or concerns about this event? Uh, not so much. I don't think the actual getting into the ring. My main thing is. Walking past all the people, <laughs> I think, and just being able the to, yeah, the entrance. How come? Yep, because it's just a whole heap of people watching me. <laughs> I'm like the the wallflower person. I like to sink off into the. Don't like to be centre of attention. No, no. So uh, that's it. That's probably the biggest thing. And I didn't give it thought until way after I'd already signed up, and then went, "Crap, what did I do?" So the actual. Being in the ring, I don't think makes me nervous. And when I've been sparring with the other girls, I'm not nervous about doing it. And I'm just hoping that I can just block out the whole rest of it. Okay. So, um, Maybe they can like sneak you in like WWE style. Yeah. You know when they drop the lights down? <laughs> sure. and then I come you, up through the through bottom the of ring. the ring. Yeah, like <laughs> a de- like a Dell at a concert. Yeah. Just come up there, like a, come from the roof, like a yep. god. Yep. I'm here. I'm here for my belt. Yep, let's go. <laughs> and just maybe soundproof the whole ring for me as well, so I don't have to listen to everyone else cheering. Or, they get rowdy. Yep, that's as you and, saw. Yeah, so I've been working with a friend on meditation. Okay. So I'm hoping that I can just breathe through it, <laughs> breathe through it, and be able to just block out everything else. They work with you though on the on the mental side of things, though, don't they? Nigel and Glenn will will teach you, not teach you, but but show you how to control the the emotion leading into. It. I believe so. Um, hasn't happened yet. <laughs> So we'll see. Probably all right on the night. And I'd go, oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. oh this thing I forgot. I knew I had to tell you something. <laughs> That's it. Whole mental side of things. Yeah. The, the, them giving you access to the, the ring and the arena prior, I think it's usually about midday on the day. Yeah. That is of 
absolutely massive of a massive benefit. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it, it was for me. Obviously, the last time I did the 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 commentary. And for even for me, I went in early as well. Yeah. Just seeing it, just seeing it without anyone in there, and and getting in the ring and, and seeing where everything is and, and where people are, I th- I would highly recommend everyone do that because yeah. the nerves, it's amazing what that does for calming your nerves. Yeah. Because if you went in there blind, like if you had never been to the the ballroom before. And your first exposure was all the lights and people yelling. At six o'clock that night, waltzing in and seeing what you see because it is it is packed. It is, and it yep. is madness. Yeah, and those cardboard cutouts on the way in, it all becomes real. <laughs> how good! I could talk to you about it. How funny is the size of Glenn and oh, Nigel I'm compared I'm to everyone else? Yeah, these straight mon- up, monsters. who are these monsters? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I reckon they've brought Glenn in a bit as well. well I reckon he's a bit more. <laughs> they said they do that tonight as well. Sorry again. <laughs> Keep going hard on I here. know. Well. Uh, All right. Well, with this walk to the ring. Yeah, the walk to the ring. The one thing that is going to calm you down is, is, is some hits, is some music. Yep. So what have we got for me? Okay. Well... Have you have you have you finalised it yet? I think I've got it down to two. I did have it down to like five, <laughs> and I'm prepared to give my input. Okay. No one has ever taken me up. Here we on go. It. I'll I'll tell you. Oops, that's not playing, is it? No. Okay. No, okay. So the ones that I had was centuries from Fallout Boy. I'll give you the list first, and then I will. Okay. Yeah. Say what my final two. We'll see what your oh, okay. what your vote are first, okay. and then we'll see if you guess what two I would have it down to. Okay. So you've got this one. Yep. Yeah. What next? Um. Then I had Beast by Rob Bailey, which has memories. Basically, <laughs> it's from Nigel's playlist. Okay. An old one, but I love it. <laughs> I'm free by Kenny Logans. Kenny Logans. Kenny Logans. And then I kind of like Footloose for the fact that we always joke about dancing in my footwork. So, <laughs> Footloose. Let me have a listen to this one. I reckon yeah. this is the one you're going to go. Oh, really? Before I've heard anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Sing it. Go on, Case. <laughs> Sing it for me. I can't. Trust me. No one wants to hear my voice singing. You should, if you come out of this, you should come out with like – a headband, like, and full, what are those? Leggings. Leggings. Leg warmers. And do the flash, flash dance, dance. Uh, run yep. there. And then when you get to the ring, just pull that chain and just the water goes all <laughs> over you. So, I'm ready. Yeah, this, this fight's been delayed <laughs> for 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, so we've got to try. We've <laughs> got to try out them. Someone's, the put, some, someone's put some uh, detergent yeah. down thinking it's your trampoline from childhood. Yep. Turn into a slip and slide. <laughs> <laughs> just slide past with oh, a bit of Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. the Footloose kind because of, it kind of reminds me of um, that same kind of 80s Rocky oh, instead yeah. of doing the typical Eye of the Tiger, though. Um, what else have we got? I, have, a few. I like these. Yep. I have um, Legends Are Made by Sam Tinez. 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 Yeah. Tinez. Isn't that where you get your ear? Isn't that ringing in the ear? Ten, That's tennis or something. Ten, ten, ten tennis. Is that- I do like it. Okay, wait. What's next? And then there's the Phoenix by the Fallout Boys. You, yeah, the Fallout Boy, are they still around? Yeah, they must be because I this just happened to come up on my playlist. They were massive and in their day, weren't they? They were, were yeah. And it was only that I was actually going to go with the Phoenix in my in my name, and so then I went, oh, well, this kind of puts it in. Very good. Let's have a listen. All of these are pretty good. I do like all of these. I think it's because we're – I'm a little bit older, but we're around the same vintage. So yep. I think we do like the same kind of music. Yeah. I have been very critical on other people's have music. You? Oh, yep. They what have is- not liked it. Uh, I think it's because I didn't know any of the songs. I do like <laughs> Fall Out Boy. Yeah. That'll be good. Any of those are yeah, great. Yeah, see, because I feel like that still has that still kind of little bit of that 80s vibes to it. Is it Fall Out – this is 90s or 80s? Um, 
maybe. Well, I didn't. I thought this was fairly new. Kenny before. Loggins was definitely yeah, 80s. Yeah, that was oh, 80s, yeah. yeah. That, and that was from Footloose. And I did actually think about Footloose as well as a, like the song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so many hits from the yeah. 80s that just sorted out, isn't there? Yeah. Your, uh, nick, your nickname is Casey the Wild Rose Graves. Yes. Did I say that right? That's I did. That's right. You How did. did the Wild Rose come about? Uh, it does rhyme with Grove, so. It does, does yep. yep. Um, wild because, well, mum just believes that I'm wild. wild. I, yep, bit of a wild child, bit of a free spirit. I'm here, there, everywhere. Take off a oh, yeah. <laughs> every given time, or I'll be there one minute and the next minute I'm not, I'm taking off camping gone. and I'm just suddenly gone. Or I do the sneak out because my cousin doesn't like to hear when I'm taking off, so oh, I kind of take off and then slip it in there. Oh. <laughs> and turn the phone off. Where, where are you? Uh, I've gone camping for the weekend. I'll <laughs> see you when I get back. So you just take off. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's the freedom we are talking about before. That's you right. can't beat that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And I'm big at it. She hates it. And so I try to keep it away from her as much as I can. Nice. Unless I, yeah. If I don't have to tell her, then I won't. Um, and the same thing when taking coming over here here for two months, she didn't really want to hear that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the rose um, one because I'm my mum's rose, but she, it was actually favorite, bringing your favorite, favorite apparently. Favorite if you want to hear, yeah, that's it. I definitely am her favorite. Um, but also, she's a lover of roses, oh, and okay. so since she's my biggest supporter, I wanted to have something that kind of reflected her in there as well. Oh, very nice. So, yeah. Oh, nice. And it rhymed so. <laughs> So you brought the whole family into it. That's good. That's it. yep. It's good that he's got that meaning behind it as well. Yeah, yeah. So the other one was uh, was going to be the Phoenix or the Phoenix Rising. Okay. Um, and mostly because, well, I've got the Phoenix. I did see, what um, is that tattoo? I did see that before. I thought you had a pen on your arm. Phoenix. It is a Phoenix. It is a Phoenix. But my cat is also called Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, which is actually named after the Phoenix Shopping Centre, not actually the Phoenix. So. <laughs> you named your cat after a shopping centre? Yep. <laughs> Why is that? Did you find him at I, the shopping centre? No. I got her when I was in Canada yeah. and I wanted to name her of something that reminded me of home and Adeline didn't really go, which is the street that I live on. Yeah. Spearwood, obviously, <laughs> doesn't really go. Tell me a Spearwood. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So Phoenix is the Phoenix Shopping Centre. <laughs> so it was home. Reminded me of home. Phoenix. That's a special shopping centre down there. <laughs> Some it. of the people that go to Phoenix yeah, shopping centre. I know. Pretty Dodgeville. <laughs> <laughs> After you've finished this, this is a, a full commitment that you've had, mm-hmm. that you're going to have. Have you got something planned for afterwards? No, which uh, makes it a little scary. Are you going to head so straight back home afterwards? I do, yep. Okay. Um, well, about a week later. Okay. Um. But yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, it's got me. Well, we're we're selling our guest houses in Taz, yeah. so um, ideally we're looking at buying property in Batemans Bay and then setting up a new business there. But tell me quickly because we did scan over it before. We yep. didn't even bring it up. I do the have it in houses. here. So tell me about the guest houses, Harrison Grove. Yep, Harrison Grove. So play on. Pretty much our names. Is that Harrison. a luxury country escape? Is that, that picturesque, peaceful, and perfect? That is. That's the one. Yep, That's what that, I heard. That is. Yep. It's got amazing reviews. If you're ever in Tassie, go stay there. <laughs> I didn't know where it was. I had to really look around. Yep. So it's located. We're located in Fawcett. So heading out towards the Tasmanian. Look, there's Andrew on one of our hikes. There we go. Yep. So uh, that was. Um, the, well, which one was it? Three Capes Walk. But we did Cape Pillar, that's it, hiking out. So that was coming back from Cape Pillar. About 30 k's in each day we hiked. That's a lot of k's. Yep. And so this is an Airbnb? Um, we don't class it as oh, Airbnb because we're a proper business. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we are, I don't know. We are. For tax purposes. <laughs> you got see a pattern forming here. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's no. just a shed. We, we are a proper business. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yep. It's not what I meant. <laughs> no. Um, we do advertise on Airbnb, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're proper guest houses. So okay. we've got three guest houses. So you're looking at the duplex in that picture, and then just off in the corner is the standalone one. That one over here? Yeah, that oh, one okay. there. Yep. Okay. And you're also involved with, uh, is it the Oyster Shed on Ray? Yep. So that's my aunt's and cousin's business. So that's where I work when I'm in Batemans Bay. You guys want better homes and gardens? 
Yes, you would have seen my cousin Jade. I, d- I did have a quick look at that. I saw what's the name of the lady that um, runs the show there. So you would have you would have seen Jade. So Jade's pretty much. Oh, I mean the show, the TV show. Oh, Did someone um, come a cropper in the wall? Oh, what? Who's her name? I don't know. The blonde Joanna Griggs. Jo- yeah, Joanna it. Griggs. There you go. Yep. Fell out of something. And I the tell the chef guy was there. It got rave reviews. The this place. oyster shed. Yeah. Yep. We sell the best oysters in New South Wales. I heard the oh, world. Best That's oysters what I heard. in what? There's my cousin. So you know that one, the picture that you're looking at with me on the swing with the other yeah. girl. That's my cousin. That's her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's featured twice in this. Interview. I know she's going to be stoked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's going to love that picture so much. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say. I'll be honest with this with this picture. I didn't see she had the oyster in her hand. Oh uh, yeah, what do you and think? I, went, she- I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Someone's holding that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I make sure this girl's all right. Okay, so she's with the knives. Yeah. Okay, so you. So this is where you work when you are in. Um, this is where you work when you're back in New South Wales. That's right. Okay. Do you like oysters? Um, I'm beginning to? to like them more. I do know I've only ate, like started having raw oysters. I tried my first one two years ago. So. The Oyster Shed is a family business. It's fourth generation on my cousin, so my aunt's husband's side. Yeah. Um, so that's how long it's been in the food. Like the that family has worked there. Yeah. So my aunt has like worked and my cousin has grown up working there. Um, being oyster farmers. <laughs> and my aunt doesn't like oysters. Neither, like none of the nieces, <laughs> nephews like them. And I don't like them. Well, I, I'm beginning to have a little bit of an appreciation for them. I it's like them cooked. Taste, isn't it? They are, yep. Um, or just doused in a whole heap of dressing. <laughs> so, just, just drown them in just Thousand drown. Island dressing. Yeah. They're um, very popular with some people, aren't they? They are, yep. And it, it is amazing. Yep. And, yep. and fr- the Clyde is meant to have some of the like the best. It's just such fresh water. Apparently, the flavour in every estuary is different. Um, okay. So, yeah. I think the one I ate must have been straight out of the Mekong. Or something. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was terrible. like garbage. I don't know what was wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is where, after you finish the PCR, this is where you're heading back? Yeah, that's so, right. Yep. Okay. And you reckon you're going to be there for a while? Who knows? Till that travel bug hits I, again? I never <laughs> put a time date on anything because mm. I can change my mind at a flip of a switch. So, <laughs> Do you think you're going to travel again soon? Uh, well, I plan to go back to Taz in May. So <laughs> I mean, travel, travel. <laughs> travel, travel. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Any plans uh, for Europe or anything like that? Nothing in the works at the moment. It's funny. It's people seem to either be very much sort of drawn towards the America, Canada, South America or Europe. Like yeah. it's often people that that w- won't sort of have no interest in going to Europe. It's quite it's quite yeah. surprising. Oh, I always um, wanted to go to Ireland was oh, one okay. of the Scotland, like and see all the moors and the, that beautiful green grass with the castles. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. My I always wanted to go to Greece, Morocco. They were the two places that um, – Alaska, can you believe I was so close and never got to Alaska? I wanted to go to Alaska since I was 13. I had pictures. That's what I had on my wall in my, Alaska. Uh, in my bedroom. Yep, pictures of – everyone else had pictures of – what was his name? Jonathan Taylor Thomas or whoever ah, it was. dreamboat. Yep, <laughs> I had pictures of Alaska, the whales and – yeah, Alaska was a place I wanted to go and still pretty much I think every – I don't know if Nigel's been to Alaska, but every other one of my family members have been and okay. I haven't. I heard a – if you ever talk about Alaska, here's a conspiracy theory that I'm a strong believer in. Not a big yeah. conspiracy theorist. I heard that you can drive – okay, you can drive east from London and get to New York. So you see what I mean? Yeah, East. yeah. This is why. This is what I believe. So Obviously, you've got the tunnel here yep. that goes underneath from uh, Dover to Calais. Yeah. Drive across. Now, there was rumours that I strongly believe here that there is a tunnel from the east, the most eastern tip of Russia yep. to Alaska. Wow. And if you think about it. It's not really that. I was going to say, is it that far? <laughs> <laughs> 80, On a map, it doesn't look that far. 85 kilometres. That's it. For a tunnel. That is the closest point, isn't it? My computer starts going I reckon, nuts, yeah, it? that looks like it is. About it? Yep. That's it. 85 kilometres. 85 kilometres. A tunnel. And if that tunnel is actually there, 
you could drive all the way from the UK all the way to New York. How's that? That is insane. It's on oh no, it's madness. I don't think people realize how close. Uh, do you know what? I don't think I've ever realised how close <laughs> like that tip of Alaska was to Russia. And that, that little island in the middle there, I don't know what it's going I don't know how to say it. It's part of uh, Alaska. Alaska, And yep. apparently each year uh, the guys from Alaska go out there and leave a drink for the guys from Russia who go out there and, and claim it as their own. Really? Yes, yeah, so it's a friendly thing. It's not wow. like at all. But yeah, yeah, how's that? That is so cool. So anyone ever t- mentions Alaska, just say, do you hear about the tunnel? So Has- have you actually done any research onto this? Oh, no, zero. Actually- Z- <laughs> okay, I was just, I'm, I'm really curious now. If, I reckon it's- If it's something that actually could exist, like is, because surely there's got to be evidence, right? Apparently, but. Like I said, I heard this. Someone would many, have to know there's a tunnel. <laughs> I heard this twenty, thirty years ago, and I've had a look, and I'm pretty sure they'll blurt it out on Google Maps. I think it's a thing, but <laughs> I think it's possible. Eight, well, eighty-five kilometers—that's not far. Piece of cake. Yeah. Tunnel. Yeah. Piece of cake. I'll get that done. Surely. Just imagine. Anyway, <laughs> if it comes out, there's because I've, I've you've I've, heard it here first. <laughs> I've said this to so many people, and if it ever comes out that there's been a tunnel there since like the seventies, oh my god, I'm going to make some phone calls. <laughs> anyways, it's, you're crazy, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but that's a fascinating thought. It's quite weird to end this interview on talking oh, about no, talking about that. supposed Russian uh, <laughs> to American tunnel. Oh. Jeez, make a lot of sense how they get stuff across the border. It would. Speedboat yeah. even. I'm, there's probably a bit of ice around that area as well. <laughs> I, I would think that there yeah. might be an iceberg or two. Big cool water. Fresh water down there. Yeah. Good for oysters. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We just cracked two hours. Wow. We well done, us. I know. <laughs> That's about well, it, mate. Okay. I want to thank you very much for spending the time to come in here today. Thank you. It's been awesome. You are it's 19 been... days away. 19, 19 days. I know. Three the, weeks. Three weeks. This is the, the strict three-week mark that I've put myself on now. I'm not going to miss a training. I've got to be right on with my diet. It's uh, it's pretty much two weeks of training left now because that last so week, last I week, are. they're just going to ease it in. Yeah. Just going to yeah, get you We have talked about it and yep. I know they tend to, um, yeah, ease back or not do anything the last couple, but I still feel like I just need – a little something in there. So. Do what's right for you. Yeah. Do what's right yep. for you. That's it. So I'll keep doing those boxing classes in between. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much. And thank if you. I do not get to see you after the event, I want to wish you all the best for your move back to New South Wales. Thank you. And if you were ever over in these parts again and you want to get out squatter, I'll yeah. have a couple of... Okay. <laughs> do you want to hold that up for the camera? Everyone can oh, see what sorry. we said about this squatter. <laughs> That on. <laughs> <laughs> Who would call it squatter? Jeez. Squatter, don't you know? Because that's what it used to be. It's not what they're referred to. Like the. I have no idea. All I think is a squatter. Someone's moved into an abandoned house <laughs> and destroyed it. <laughs> Thanks for your time today, Case. Thank you. And I'll chat to you again soon, mate. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.